the first we're going to look at is uh, little and large. Um, <clears throat> and you'll see why. There we go. So we're looking at two cameras really at uh, either end of the scale, both uh, in terms of size and also in cost. I think the Vest Pocket Kodak, and that's the original one, not the autographic, cost about $6 initially. And the uh, 4A folding Kodak uh, would have been around about 100, depending on the lens and shutter combination that you went for, really. Um, I've also picked on these because um, they were available to buy more or less at the same time. The, uh, the vest pocket, obviously, that version um, was 1912 to about 1914, and then it became autographic. And the, uh, the 4A was available from 1906 up to about 1915. So... Yeah, you could, have, you could have made the choice between those two cameras if you'd wanted to. Flick on to that next picture. Um, so I'll just talk about the 4A um, first. Um, interestingly, uh, obviously around that time, the very popular range were the uh, folding pocket Kodaks particularly number three, 3A, four. Whoever it was at Kodak who tested the cameras in his American standard pocket, uh, obviously decided that when they got to the 4A, they couldn't actually get it in his pocket. So he, they dropped the pocket name and just called it the 4A folding Kodak. Introduced 1906 with the 126 size film, which was introduced with that camera. And that provided an image size six and a half by four and a half inches. Um, that particular model is quite an early one. Uh, obviously, it's got the red bellows and it has a, a Borshin Lom lens and Kodak automatic shutter. On the aperture scale it actually shows f4 now you know all the books i've got i can't find any reference to abortion lom f4 f63 seems to be the um the widest shutter uh, widest aperture opening but um who knows they were they were available in in so many different combinations that uh, it's quite possible there was one the uh, vest pocket as I say, this is, again, is quite an early model, probably from around about 1912. Um, you may be able to just see that it has actually got the square corner bellows on that particular one rather than the chamfered bellows, which indicates it is a fairly early model. And uh, an extremely, extremely popular camera, particularly in the autographic version. Obviously, as we all know, dubbed these the soldier's camera allegedly one of the cameras that took some of the photographs of the, the, the truce uh, at uh, Christmas 1914 on, on the uh, front, First World War front. Um, who knows, there might have been a couple of other cameras there, but certainly from its pocketability, it, it, you can understand why it was dubbed the soldier's camera. Um, the autographic version obviously appeared in uh, 1914. And uh, the other interesting thing about these two cameras is they have consecutive uh, film uh, numbering. So 127, uh, 126 was introduced for the 4A and 127 introduced um, with the Vest Pocket Kodak. And of course, image size for these, two and a half by one and five eighths. This particular model, just simple meniscus lens, ball bearing shutter, and negative sizes, which I think we might see on there. So it's about, well, just over seven times uh, greater the image size on the 4A. 
to the vest pocket. And uh, as we know at that time, really, um, enlargements weren't particularly a thing at that time. Uh, so really, you know, the, the negative size was more or less the size of the photograph uh, that you received. Um, so uh, they were mainly contact printed. So um, obviously you can see the benefit of having a much larger camera and a much um, bigger, bigger picture. Um, you could actually um, obtain fairly easy uh, postcard sized enlargements from the VPK uh, using uh, this little device, the Vest Pocket uh, Kodak Enlarging Camera. Um, and that was fairly easy to use. So you just, you're negative at the, uh, the narrow end and your postcard sized uh, photo paper on the bottom, um, introduce a light source at the top and um, and then develop your, your photos. So you could get um, quite a decent postcard size print from those. Um, okay, uh, so we're just gonna have a look at uh, some other specific examples now. Um, now, I, I know you've had your colored camera session, but I just thought I'd throw in some of um, Kodak's uh, coloured folders um, and colours of the rainbows of course refers to um, the rainbow Hawkeyes. Hawkeye cameras after about 1901 were all distributed by premium schemes so you collected um, tea coupons, cigarette coupons was obviously a, a, a very popular one, black cat cigarettes um, and um, you smoked yourself silly till you had a hundred and so coupons, sent them off, and you got a camera. These Hawkeye, they, they were purported to, to have the, the, the longest um, um, actual name, camera name, um, because their actual name was the Rainbow Hawkeye Number 2A Folding Model B, uh, was the full title. And uh, these were available in, in various colors. Um, there was a blue one. Interestingly as well, you might, obviously we've got green on the left there and brown on the right. The green has its original green bellows. Uh, the brown one has replacement bellows. You might realize that the center one is black, but uh, Kodak still called it a rainbow Hawkeye. So you can have Black isn't actually a colour of a rainbow, but um, anyway, it was in Kodak's eyes. Most of the coloured cameras appeared between sort of towards the end of the 1920s, 1928 ish, and the fashion more or less disappeared by the mid 30s, really. Um, so that's there were um, uh, a couple some special versions of them. Um, the are um, not much difference that, that there's uh, a slightly better lens on these, uh, hence the, um, the special name, uh, blue one on the left um, with original blue bellows. Uh, that one I purchased fairly recently on eBay and the guy who was selling it, um, the photos, uh, they looked like a black camera. And so very few people, um, I thought it was a black camera until it arrived in the post and I realised it was blue. Um, so I got that quite reasonably. Um, I think it was under a tenner at the time. So uh, I did quite well on that one. The maroon one on the right, um, again, has had replacement bellows there. Um, it would have had, obviously, um, uh, maroon bellows originally. OK, um, the Hawkeyes, yeah, were, were uh, the premium scheme versions, but um, you could also um, go out and buy um, a coloured camera as well. So Pocket Kodaks made a series of coloured ones. So um, 
uh, a number one pocket Kodak, uh, right and left, in um, brown and grey, and in the centre, a, a, a blue 1A. And again, these were all available around about the 1930s, really. Um, also, um, you were able to get uh, 620 and 616 versions in colour. So the 616 on the left is, is a brown version of the uh, 616 Model C, the sort of real Art deco shaped one. And um, a much darker brown on the 620 on the right there. Let's have a look. The next ones, um, the VPK Model Bs, which the VPKs appeared in uh, 1926. Um, the other uh, version, um, autographic VPK, lasted all the way up until 26 and then uh, became the Model B and also Series 3. So um, here we've got uh, the Girl Guide on the left um, and the Boy Scout on the right. These were the uh, Kodak Limited versions, so made in this country uh, with uh, a metal body. Uh, green for the Boy Scout and blue for the Girl Guide. And the one in the centre is the American Girl Scout. Uh, and they had the uh, conventional uh, leather covered uh, body. Um, and you can see the sort of uh, uh, Girl Scout emblem on the front. And uh, these were available with all sorts of different designs uh, in the States. And uh, as were the Kodak Petite. This particular one has got a purpley coloured um, covering and uh, a light blue um, paintwork and a sort of a, um, a, a sort of a pale, I suppose you would call it violet almost coloured bellows uh, on them. And um, interestingly, the, the Boy Scout and Girl Guide ones and Girl Scout uh, were never made with an autographic feature but um, this Kodak Petite is, this, this was um, uh, uh, certainly for, or featured the autographic feature and you can see that by the, the stylus on the front there. And again, the Petite was available um, in all sorts of different designs, um, lightning and uh, uh, they, they fetch a real premium um, as you probably know. So um, yeah. this is, uh, about the only one I could afford. <laughs> um, now the next ones you'll probably uh, recognize straight away um, because we've just seen some of them. Um, so here are the Vanity Kodaks uh, and they were some of the first colored ones actually. They appeared in 1928. So based on the Best Pocket Kodak Series 3 and uh, they were all given names. So uh, from left to right, you've got uh, Bluebird Blue, Red Breast Red, Jenny Wren Brown, and Seagull Grey. The one that's missing there, for those of you that know, is uh, Cockatoo Green. And if anybody's got one, want to donate it to my collection, I'll be happy to take <laughs> it off their hands. <laughs> Interestingly, the, the, the grey and the Cockatoo Green one um, people very easily get those mixed up. I've, I've seen grey ones advertised as green and, and vice versa. Um, it is difficult because um, the aging and, and effects of uh, ultraviolet on the, on the leather work do tend to sort of fade them um, from one colour to another. So it is quite difficult. I, I, I ummed and ahed about that one and I've, I've, I've finally decided it is a grey one. Um, it certainly looks grey in that picture anyway. 